Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this introductory webinar on net zero for businesses by the Carbon Trust. Our aim today is to provide um, a good overview on, on the topic of net zero, which is um, obviously gaining a lot of momentum in, in the context of climate change action at a global level, and, and certainly in, in Europe. Uh, I am Marta Iglesias, director in the business services team, um, and I lead the, the team of net zero and science-based targets within our business services team in the Carbon Trust. And I have with me today my colleague Mark Reynolds. Uh, Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning everyone. Thanks for attending the webinar. Um, yeah, I'm Mark Reynolds, Associate Director uh, in the business services team uh, and I work with um, corporates um, across the UK and wider actually uh, around helping them to um, integrate net zero uh, into their business. I'm also the commercial lead for our route to net zero proposition, which I'll talk about later. Thank you, Mark. So in the session today, we wanted to give some context to net zero from a corporate point of view, and also have a look at what this means in practical terms for, for businesses looking to set net zero targets and looking to, to develop their strategies accordingly. And you can see here the points that we will cover over the next few minutes. To begin with, um, it, it's useful to have a look, uh, a quick look um, at the timeline of recent developments in, in the context of climate change commitments and, and agreements at an international level. So first of all, in 2015, the Paris Agreement was the first legally binding treaty on climate change adopted by almost 200 nations at COP21 and um, was aiming for a goal to limit global warming to well below two degrees and pursue efforts to limit to 1.5. Then um, three years later, in 2018, the special report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change show the impact on ecosystems and on um, people and, and economies that going above 1.5 degrees of warming would have. And this was really a, a pivotal moment when it was made clear that the world needs to reach net zero, um, net, net zero emissions, emissions balanced with, with removals by 2050 if we are to, um, to avoid some of the largest impacts, as I said, on, on economies and, and on, on people and ecosystem all over the planet. So um, a few years later, in May uh, 2021, uh, a year ago, the European Union set the European, European climate law. It, this is a legally binding, binding target. So Europe is, is now committed to achieve net zero emissions by, by 2050. Shortly after um, the G7, uh, some of the world's largest, um, most kind of powerful countries, um, reconfirmed their commitment to limit warming to 1.5. And um, later in 2021, the Science Based Targets um, Initiative, SBTI, released the Corporate Net Zero Standard, which is a critical document um, that provides guidance on what net zero really means. So now, following COP26, um, governments and organizations are really committing to um, net zero and defining their strategies to deliver against those uh, promises and those targets. And really, um, it is clear that the time now is, is the, it's really the time for action on climate. So if we look um, at what the importance of, of net zero is for businesses, and we look at this from the point of view of what role businesses can play. Um, it's important to bear in mind that for the world to limit temperature to uh, temperature increase to 1.5, action from, from government uh, is not enough. And there was a special, uh, sorry, a, um, a report from um, the U UNEP, uh, Emissions Gap Report, the latest one in 2021, showed that with national pledges um, and with net zero pledges that, that uh, more and more countries are committing to, the warming would still reach 2.2 degrees by the end of the century. 
So there is clearly a need for um, for businesses to also align to, to these uh, ambitious commitments and to even take leadership in accelerating global efforts. So let's have a look now at what is meant by net zero. And we uh, have mentioned that the SBTI has issued the um, net zero standard, and this sets clearly the criteria for what is net zero. So first of all, emissions of scope one, two, and three need to be reduced to zero or as close to zero as, as possible. And um, the trajectory needs to be aligned with 1.5 degree of warming. And second, any emissions um, that remain, any residual emissions um, at the net zero target and any year after that need to be neutralized. And this means permanently removed from the atmosphere. So let's have a look at the at, at a, um, graph that represents what this means in um, you know in the timeline. So we can see here emissions of a company um, all the way to 25, uh, sorry, 2050 um, and beyond. And we can see that there's a near term reduction, five to 10 years from date of submission to the SBTI. Um, these reductions um, are, are called the, the short term or near term reduction by the SBTI. And as I said, between five and, and 10 years, and then the long term is by 2050 at the latest. And these reductions need to be aligned with 1.5 degree of warming. One is interesting thing that we can see also here, in addition to the, the net zero and the neutralization happening in the target year, is the uh, point three in the graph, is the beyond value chain mitigation. This is, um, optional by the SBTI, but definitely encouraged for businesses setting net zero targets. And this refers to um, mitigation action or investments that are not within scope one, two or three, are beyond a company's value chain and are aimed at um, reducing um, greenhouse gases, avoiding greenhouse gases beyond a company's value chain and also um, um, investing, for instance, on, on technologies that remove um, gases from the atmosphere, greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, such as um, direct air capture and storage, for instance. And these are nascent technologies and investments on these and, and um, kind of focus on getting this off the ground and ready to be used by the target year is really crucial on the journey to net zero. So it's something that, as I said, um, is really encouraged by the SBTI as companies reduce their emission, that is the priority uh, for their scopes uh, one, two, and three, so operations and value chain, but also looking beyond at how they can contribute in, in, the, in a kind of broader, broader sense at the, the journey towards net zero for, um, for all, all companies. So um, without getting into too much um, technicalities around the requirements, let's have a look at um, what it means in terms of reduction for near and long term. And in, in this table, we can see if we look first at this row of near term uh, science based targets. So this uh, for scope one and two means looking at um, at a minimum of 95% of scope one and two emissions um, and reducing them on a, on a pathway um, aligned with 1.5. So this is a 4.2 linear annual reduction. For a scope three, um, this is a requirement for near term for those companies whose emissions are 40% or, or more of the total scope one, two and three, and they can be reduced on a well below two degree ambition. Not, it's, it's not required that the, the ambition is um, 1.5 at this near term. Then when we look at the long term, um, and long term net zero, as we said, 2050 or sooner, for scope one and two, the reduction needs to be also looking at 95% of scope one and two, and the reduction needs to be um, 
90% uh, on a cross-sector pathway, and there are some um, sectorial specific requirements, such as 80% reduction for uh, flag sector, which is forest, land, and agriculture sector. And, and there are some other technicalities depending on the sector, but broadly, we're looking at, a, at around a 90% reduction from, uh, from baseline. For a scope three, um, all companies need to look at 90% for the long term, for a scope three, and the reduction needs to be um, around 90%, a minimum of 90% reduction, and this is um, aligned with 1.5 degree ambition. And as I said, there's some, some uh, specific requirements based on the sector. Um, and I'll now hand over to, to Mark to take us through the steps around planning your target and, and starting the net zero journey. Thanks, Marta. Yeah, so just a, a few thoughts in terms of uh, business drivers on why you should be setting a net zero target. I, I guess the first point, and I think it's you know well understood now, is is basically um, your contribution matters. So every government, every corporate um, needs to be engaged on this agenda. I think there's widespread agreement on that now and understanding of that. Um, so it's important that um, you, as part of your business planning, are looking to integrate uh, net zero products and services and, and the net zero pathway uh, into your business models. Um, it's also important from a, from a point of view in terms of business strategy. Um, so ultimately, we are moving to um, a low carbon economy and every business, every government has a choice in terms of um, adopting, starting to adopt uh, those new business models now uh, or waiting uh, till ultimately uh, you have to do it um, due to legislation. And, and we would encourage companies to act now. Um, it gives you the chance to, uh, to gain com competitive advantage over your competition. Um, it also drives innovation um, and it, um, it, 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 that should be reflected in terms of uh, your business performance. So certainly in some of the sectors we operate in, um, like the retail sector, for instance, we see uh, companies setting net zero targets and, and even accelerating ambition on those net zero targets and, and um, competitors tend to, uh, to follow suit. So it is becoming a point of differentiation for many businesses now um, as there's more and more scrutiny on businesses in terms of looking at what businesses are doing around the net zero agenda. Um, so this is important um, from the point of view of your stakeholders, um, so your investors. So increasingly what we see is companies being judged by their investors around uh, what they're doing on net zero. We know that um, companies like BlackRock, for instance, um, will actually call out companies um, that are not, uh, don't have a net zero strategy in place. Um, we also see that um, consumers have high expectations in terms of the business sector um, they expect business to lead on this agenda. Um, we know from the work we do um, on carbon labelling, for instance, that more than 70% of consumers um, expect businesses to be able to measure um, and quantify the footprint of their products and services. And, and actually, carbon labelling is one of the fastest growing uh, parts of our business um, these days. So it's important from the point of view of your stakeholders it's important from the point of view of your brand reputation. Um, it's also important in terms of um, managing both risk and opportunity um, in your business model. Ultimately, uh, climate change is a risk to, to, your, to your business model. Uh, and if you don't act, um, you'll quickly find that you uh, lose competitive advantage in the, in the marketplace. Um, and, and I guess finally, um, if, you don't, if you don't look to, uh, to act now, um, you will be subject to legislation that will require you to act um, in due course. So we see more and more uh, legislation coming out from government. We know from um, the recent COP event in November um, that there there's more legislation coming uh, into the UK market, for instance, around um, mandatory reporting of climate change risk and opportunity. Um, there's also legislation uh, expected in terms of companies being able to define transition pathways to net zero. Um, so basically, um, it is the direction of travel. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of sort of progress to date, what we've seen in, in the Carbon Trust in terms of the work um, we do uh, with both the government sector and the corporate sector is, is a rapid uptake um, in terms of net zero over the past um, two to three years. So 
Um, I think post COP, the COP event in November, now 70% of the global co economy is now covered by net zero targets. More than 130 countries uh, have signed up um, to that, which is great news. Um, corporate commitments similarly, again, over the last two, three years have, have followed that lead. So one third of large corporates today are now committed to net zero and I think one fifth globally. Um, so we're seeing more and more adoption of net zero, which is, which is great news. Um, challenges around that have been, um, certainly in the past, um, lack of uh, standards around, around net zero. So um, both governments and corporates have taken very different approaches to define uh, net zero targets. So, so maybe defining different boundaries in terms of uh, what scopes are included. Um, in many cases, uh, value chain uh, emissions have not been included. I think only 30% of targets uh, in the UK currently include value chain. Um, so best practice requires that, that that boundary should include um, all scopes. In terms of a level of ambition, we've talked about the fact that uh, that today the expectation would be that the, the uh, reduction pathway should be aligned to 1.5 degrees. That hasn't always been the case in the past in terms of um, net zero target setting. Um, also, the target year may, may vary. So there's, the, as you've heard already, so the, the expectation is that the net zero target year should be 2050 um, or before. Uh, or before that. So in some cases, companies have set much more aggressive net zero target years, but they're only covering a, a much smaller element of their boundary, for instance, only their own operations. Um, so that's one of the challenges we see um, in terms of some of the uh, targets, target setting in the past. Um, and I guess the second challenge we see is that um, we've seen great progress in, on target setting, which is great. Um, we now have some standards in place for target setting with the new uh, SPTI net zero standard, as, as already mentioned. Um, but we now need companies to start to move into the implementation phase and actually look to implement um, these targets that are being set. Next slide. So just to summarize, um, so I've talked a bit about target setting. Um, in terms of the steps you need to take if you haven't already done so to to setting a net zero target. And this is the work that, that we, we, we do a lot of at the Carbon Trust with the corporate sector, um, work with many hundreds of companies uh, on this agenda over the past three years in particular. Um, so step one, measuring your, your company's global emissions. Most large companies um, are doing that today, certainly in terms of their own operations. Um, in the last two or three years, we've seen a lot more companies start to me measure their full value chain emissions, scope three emissions. It's a lot more complicated to do that. There's 15 categories covered within the GHG protocol for scope three. So many organizations will come to organizations like the Carbon Trust to get help around that. Um, so that's still still an area where there's more work to do, I would say, but, but we've seen a big trend of, of, of more and more companies now measuring their scope three emissions, which is the foundations to actually be able to set um, a net zero target. Step two, as you already heard, um, is, is to actually um, look at the guidance from the SBTI, apply the appropriate pathways and methodologies to actually set net zero targets, both uh, short term and long term. So it's um, based on uh, guidance in terms of best practice, in terms of the pathways uh, as defined by the SBTI. And then the third element, um, once you've set that reduction pathway, um, is to address the residual emissions. So those would be the hard to decarbonize elements of your footprint. So that might include um, things like fleet emissions for HGV fleet or um, emissions from uh, burning of fossil fuels that you can't um, mitigate from your own operations. So for those hard to decarbonize elements, uh, you, make, you need to make a commitment to actually neutralize those um, through procurement of GHG reductions and that's the, the third step essentially um, in setting uh, a net zero target. Um, so this, these steps typically for, for most businesses will, will take will take a bit of time. Um, if you don't already have a, <clears throat> a full scope three value chain footprint defined then that, that's something you need to do. So you, so you need a baseline in place before you go ahead and actually um, set these targets. Once you've done that um, the challenge then comes in terms of um, communicating that um, and talking about it and then of course the implementation piece so let's talk a little bit more about that next slide please so yeah in terms of communication um, 
as you hopefully picked up by now in terms of the, the presentation today, this is quite a complex topic. So there is um, for sure an opportunity or a risk um, of greenwashing associated with communication of uh, net zero. Um, so a lot of the work we do again, once, once companies have set a target is to help organizations to be very clear about exactly what they've committed to. Um, so when you do communicate this, to your external stakeholders, you just need to be clear what you're signing up to, what is the boundary of your target. You need to you need to be clear in terms of the mitigation pathways, your commitments around neutralization. Um, we would always encourage organisations to publish information uh, on your website, um, and also then to talk about um, not just the targets but the progress you're looking to make, how you're going to report on that progress, um, and how you're going to keep that momentum up. Um, in terms of the actual achievement of that target um, beyond that sort of first phase. So um, great opportunity, obviously, and very important in terms of um, brand and sort of reputation to be talking about what you're doing, but equally important to be doing that in a very um, accurate way. Um, so that's a bit about communication. In terms of implementation, um, I'll talk briefly about that. Next slide, please. So. That really is the next big challenge. Um, as I say, we've seen great progress over the last two or three years in terms of adoption of net zero targets and communication of those. But the next big challenge really for most companies um, uh, um, is around how to actually implement net zero. So we do quite a bit of work with companies to help them define their 10 year uh, roadmap and help to address how they will meet the science based targets that they've defined um, and then it's about actually putting some of those um, those mitigation um, projects into into practice um, and that can be challenging because obviously to do that you need to get buy-in across the business both for reductions in your own operations and 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 reductions obviously outside your own operations so that's about working with your internal stakeholders to get buy-in to actually adopt measures to drive the reductions. It is about changing business models in many cases. Um, it may mean changing the products and services um, that you're taking to the market. Um, it, will, it will certainly mean uh, working with your supply chain um, to look at what you're doing and look to drive reductions within your supply chain, be it substitution of the products and services you buy or, or simply um, looking at different ways to do things, so all of those things are a challenge. You know, how do you, how do you measure progress against your uh, net zero targets? How do you get buy-in from your stakeholders across the business to actually drive these changes across the business? And how do you know what progress you're making uh, and if you're on track? So um, these are all areas that we we see as the next challenge for the for the um, for businesses going forward, um, and in order to address that, we've actually um, just launched a new uh, carbon trust standard specifically uh, aimed at businesses to help answer some of these questions around the kind of whole the whole um, pathway in terms of routes to net zero. So for companies that haven't started on that journey yet, um, the standard provides guidance to help help them actually plan their route map to net zero. So addressing some of the things we've talked about on the webinar this morning. Um, helping businesses to to navigate how to get to that point, and then secondly, for organisations that have set a net zero target, it's about measuring progress on that journey, so then communicate that to your external stakeholders. So the standard will enable businesses uh, businesses in in both categories to actually um, have a useful uh, mechanism to actually communicate progress on the journey to net zero. So that's, um, I think we're pretty much out of time. So yeah, that concludes what we wanted to talk about this morning. Um, hopefully you found that of interest. If you haven't already done so, you can download the uh, net zero guide um, from the uh, handout option. Um, if you're interested to, to learn more going forward, this is quite a, a short webinar this morning, please go ahead and register for our route to net zero um, breakfast briefing. And if you have um, 
further information, then please contact us directly um, on the email below. I think we're going to conclude the um, the session by just showing a, a short uh, video on on the uh, net zero standard. But um, thanks very much for attending the webinar this morning, and um, hope you found it of interest.